Hey guys, Mark's here. Uh, we're going to be going ahead and doing a little bit of a different video today. Uh, we were so kindly asked by JGod to go ahead and do a collaboration video um, by analyzing different circles, end games, things like that on his channel. If you guys want to go check that out, I'll go ahead and put a link in the description to his channel. Um, he was so kindly as to give us uh, four images of different end game circles here. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and be breaking those down exactly how I would be playing them. Uh, hopefully better assisting you guys uh, and how you guys would play your end games. Uh, let's check it out. Hey guys, okay, so we've got our first circle here. Um, this does appear to be solos. It looks like he's done a couple of supply runs here to get himself a self res, munitions, uh, kill streaks, things of that nature. Um, he sees exactly where it's ending. It is going to be ending on that airport tarmac out there with all the uh, the little Doritos, as other people call them. Uh, we see that he's got a Bertha here. I don't know exactly how healthy that is. Um, if it's, you know, kind of torn up, brand new, things like that. But what I would do here, um, I would definitely go ahead and try and get that Bertha. Hopefully it is full health. If not, he can still use it. I would definitely play inside ring here. Uh, while he's inside of the Bertha, he can 3P it, you know, look over the walls, things like that, see if anyone's pushing him. Most likely the way in solos here... There's going to be a bunch of people posted up over here on airport side and across. So if anybody really tries to push him, I think somebody from fire or warehouse, even down here at trailers, I think they're going to go ahead and definitely beam them before they get to ring. If not, he should be able to see them in the Bertha. Uh, what I would definitely do once this zone is starting to close in, um, I would be gatekeeping all of this side. Everyone's got to run out into the open, get some picks there. Uh, everyone from this side is going to be kind of running in fighting as well. They're not in the best spots since they have to play the low ravine. Uh, this is going to be right here a pretty decent zone if you can keep the Bertha alive. I would definitely try and keep on this side of the uh, the end game circle here as he has the most cover behind all of these. I would definitely try and clear out all of the airplane here. Um, if you can do that successfully, anybody on this side is going to be fighting. And if he can keep the Bertha alive, he's going to be able to use that for hard cover in the very last zone here. And then everyone would most likely be dead before it even shifts. So this is the second one here. Uh, it isn't the best quality, so I do apologize about that, guys. But uh, we see exactly where it's going to be ending, the rotates, things like that, with the foresight here. Um, it does look like he is somewhere here by apartments. I can only assume that if that is right where he is. Also, I don't know if this is solos, duos, trios, or quads, because they do have helicopters here. Um, so if he's playing duos, I, he might be playing duos, I believe. Um, hopefully, what I, we should really discuss first is trying to get their contract multiplier up. Usually, the way with four sites is obviously you get the $20,000. You go to one of the bunkers with the special buys in it, buy it. But as we know, you know, if you're getting all this money... And, you know, you're not doing contracts to get the money. You're really not going to be, you know, those those multipliers aren't going to be going up. And you're not going to be getting enough money per contract. That way, if you need to regain uh, by, you know, kill streaks, boxes, things like that. So what I would definitely be doing um, while trying to go and buy a foresight is doing, you know, supply runs, either that, recon, scavengers, things like that, just to get their money up a lot. As well as if they needed to, to be able to regain very easily by doing either crown or supply run, things like that. But let's take a look at the circle here. Um, it does look like we are having a Boneyard ending here. This is actually one of my favorite ones here um, by holding its L building. Um, based on what I would say, the loadouts here would probably be a close range AR. So probably Emacs or FFAR uh, as the meta is kind of included. You know, M16, thing, uh, CAR, SPR, uh, FFAR. I would definitely use some kind of variation of that. Um, I know some of the shotguns are a little bit uh underrated right now some of them are pretty powerful so one of them could be using that if this is duos um i would definitely try and booby trap this with as many claymores as you can so that way if you you know get pushed someone gets insta knocked things like that that's man down for them but as far as what i'm seeing here i would definitely be playing the inside of this house here um anybody who's going to be able to push them they're probably going to get deleted you know if it's a good team holding this building with claymores things like that if they have you know they don't even have to have the best gun skill here. If they have decent gun skill, you know, they can, with the help of the claymores, uh, they should be able to go ahead and get those picks fairly easy. I do see here, there's somebody with a Bertha here, and they are doing a contraband, I believe. Um, I would definitely wait for them to leave, do what they need to do before trying to take this. Uh, the main route I would take to rotate here, I definitely would try and avoid 
uh, towers, SOS buildings, apartments, warehouses. I would try and go all the way around here and take this road in. Um, that way they don't really have to deal with as many people. Um, right here, uh, after this rotate, because it goes from here to this circle, uh, I would definitely, uh, once this is starting to move, I would try and play to the right side here. Um, there are certain openings within these walls here. That way they can try and move out. Uh, or if they want to go ahead and move early, they could do that and then run across if they have gas masks. That way they can hold a uh, hillside and then just kind of kill everybody who's rotating out. Um, after this rotate, it rotates back here. So you would be able to hold anybody fairly easy there. I think this is a pretty common circle that we get a lot. And I think it would be a pretty easy hold here. Let's check out the next one. Okay, guys. So we're checking out our third uh, circle here. Um, this is kind of... Um, a little bit of a crazier circle here because it's not really ending on you know like a building or anywhere really that great um i think the only thing you have here is there's a huge dip over here um you have the full side ravine and then you have the inside of the train tracks here now they're at spiral right now they obviously they know exactly where the circle is going to end um it looks like they have a bertha and a tack rover here um i think the way that i would try and play this zone um, I would definitely try and get to Bertha here. It looks like fire may have a Bertha that's fresh. And I know this one is fresh 100%. So I would try and get two Berthas here if this is duos. Um, if this is solos, I would definitely just try and get one of these fresh Berthas. I would rotate all the way back over here. Even though this isn't where endgame is going to be, it is one of the strongest spots that you can be in. So once these zones are starting to move in, what I would do is I would slowly start playing with my Bertha, just three ping anything, just making sure I'm not going to get pushed from behind, uh, third party, things like that. I would definitely keep on the hillside here. Anybody in promenade, everyone's just going to be trying to kill, you know, everyone's going to kill each other. Um, the lobby's going to die fairly quickly here from downtown. Um, anyone that's in these buildings here are actually going to be gatekeeping for you. So you shouldn't have to worry too much about park side, downtown side, things like that. Um, I don't know if he has, you know, self reses, kill streaks, um, boxes, things like that, gas mask. The way that I think that I would play uh, play this would definitely have to be rotating in alongside the the hillside over here and the street. I think that everyone's going to be preoccupied with trying to survive over here. It's you know not trying to shoot a Bertha. Um, obviously, this is kind of if you see this zone, obviously you're going to want to try and take one of the buildings here. But in this case, since we know that it's going to end out in the middle of basically nowhere, um, I think keeping a birth alive is actually going to be really beneficial. Um, anyone from the building is going to have to jump down um, or come out the bottom there. Again, if there's going to be at least seven to ten people alive in this end game, they're all going to be fighting things like that. They're not really going to be focused on you as a Bertha. Now, one thing I would say is one thing you could do, you could try and play underneath with a Bertha here, trying to keep it alive as long as possible. You know, there's only two entrances, uh, one out here and one out here. So you could actually control it fairly well. Um, that's just another possibility there. And then once you're in endgame, you can just drive up here, you know, drive and then kind of try and stay in the action, you know, run some people over, try and get the dub there. Now, if that's not a possibility, another thing you could do is because I do think that you are in underneath here, is you could actually, once this zone is starting to shift this way, um, you could actually try and take the building, get up top, you know, kind of peek over the ledge and gatekeep, uh, try and pick off some of the last people alive. If, you know, there's not only, you know, two people on the shift. Um, this isn't really the greatest circle. So these are just kind of things that RNG have, you know, kind of play as well. Um, this is how I would play it. You know, you can play it a different way if you want to play in maybe like park in. Um, I know there's a little bridge here. There's a bridge here, but this isn't really the best circle. I just think that the best way to play it would be rotating in hillside, kind of trying to determine it as you go. Uh, see exactly how many people are alive, who's on this hillside with you as well. That's another key thing uh, as to whether or not you really want to play it or not. But I think a decent player could easily win this uh, just by keeping a Bertha alive and playing the hills here. So let's go ahead and check out the next one. All right, guys, this looks like it's going to be our fourth uh, circle here and last one. Uh, it looks like we have a top quarry ending here. A um, couple of things I see so far. I don't know exactly where he could be, if he's in military or if he's really right here. Um, all I know is he is going to want to go ahead and definitely get up to high hill here. It looks like he has a fresh Bertha here. 
Um, if he doesn't have a car or anything, he could go for this ATV, send it up, you know, kind of the high hill here, and then wrap down and take the Bertha. Um, I don't know. Again, you know, we kind of try and clarify on these things that the most important things you can have in this uh, game, obviously, is your kill streaks, your boxes, um, your self res, things like that. Um, those are going to be some of the real key components to winning. If you don't have any of those, you know, it's going to definitely put you in a, a very rough spot. So the thing about foresight is, you know, if you're just trying to go ahead and go, uh, go and get it immediately, uh, it's $20,000. You know, if you're not doing any kind of contracts, things like that in between, it's going to be very, very hard to try and regain if possible. Um, you know, your contracts aren't going to be worth as much money. Uh, you know, it's going to definitely make it a lot harder. If you do die, go to the gulag and then try and, you know, come back here. So I'm going to go ahead and just assume that right now he has a self res, a kill streak, and a munitions box. Um, the main thing that I would do here first, I would definitely try and get this car, rotate up high hill, get this Bertha. Um, if you know where the spawns are in the vehicles, you'll know this is a fresh Bertha. It's not going to be touched. It's going to be full HP. Um, after you get this, I would definitely rotate up the hill right here and then play a hillside here. Basically, the main reason why you go ahead and play the hillside here is you definitely, um, you could take the building here, but you don't really know who's going to be coming from high hill. I think it's far more beneficial if you just take the Bertha survey up here, see exactly who's going to be coming from outside. If there is anybody, you know, take them out, uh, get their loot, things like that. But I definitely don't think that it's a great idea just to go and take the house. Um, you can get pushed from a lot of different angles. There's a bunch of jump up spots for this one house. Um, and I don't think it's as strong as people think. Um, the Bertha here is definitely a lot stronger in this scenario. Um, if you can keep it alive, obviously in this circle here, you just kind of play the hills, drive back and forth. Um, once you have to start to push in, things like that, you can still kind of play up on the ledge here. And then once this one actually rotates, whoever's in the house, if there's anybody in the house, is going to have to rotate out. I don't think uh, that this circle would actually last longer than the first rotate. Um, I think that it's going to end in this zone here, um, especially in solos. If this is solos, I don't, you know, I only see one guy on the mini map. So I think if this is with solos, you definitely try and keep your Bertha alive. If you've ever played solos, I'm sure you already know how strong the Berthas actually are. Um, obviously, key meta uh, loadout in this would probably be um, since our meta is pretty strict, uh, AMAX, FVR, even M16 paired with an FFAR, um, or you could do an FFAR with a sniper, maybe a CAR-98, SPR, HDR. Um, that would be my go-to loadout for sure in this kind of circle. Um, you're not really looking to make those super long range kills. Obviously if it's solos, you're really going to be kind of doing close range, uh, engagements. Um, so I think really here, the key aspect in this circle is to definitely keep a berth alive, play high hill, rotate in when it's obviously rotating in, uh, take anyone out. You can actually use the Bertha for hardcover, throw stuns over it, things like that. Give yourself the advantage on that. Um, but I think that obviously with the positioning here, high hill is going to save you 10 times out of 10. Nobody wants to fight uphill. So I think if you control this high hill here, you win the game 10 times out of 10. Um, and it's that easy. Hey guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I do appreciate it. Um, if you guys want to go ahead and check out some of this stuff live, I do stream on Twitch daily. We are on a 275 day streak right now of streaming in a row. Um, you can go ahead and check out our stream, learn these things kind of live, pick up on little tips and tricks that we use to go ahead and win all of our games here. Um, if you do uh, think that you learned something from this video, I would appreciate it if you went ahead and hit that like button and subscribed. We are very close to applying for partnership on YouTube, so I would appreciate all the help. Thank you very much, guys, for watching the video, and have a great rest of your day.